when running big projects with a large amount of data and logs, it's important to have the right tools to get a clear overview of what is happening in real time. Let's discover Siglent, a free open source software for log management. It can ingest all your data from various sources such as Vector, Splunk or Elastic. From there, you can perform queries on a huge number of rows with its query builder, then save it to create visualization dashboard from your data, but also generate alerts to monitor errors or any event such as a low stock of one of your products. On top of that, it is incredibly fast. Before diving into its features through our platform overview, let's see the different options available to use it. They don't have a cloud version yet, but there is a waiting list if you are interested in it. You can also self-deploy it following their instructions on GitHub or use a platform like ours, Elestio, to take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To install Siglens on our platform, go to ls.io and click on Login. Then choose Deploy My First Service, search for Siglens, choose between the different cloud providers, region and service plan based on your need. I will keep the default ones and click on Next. Adjust your level of support, I will choose the free included one and then click on Create Service. When your instance is ready, you receive an email to give you access to your credentials, so click here to get the password. You arrive on your admin dashboard within Elestio, copy the password to your clipboard and access your instance by following the admin UI link. The username by default is root and the password paste it from your clipboard and then hit sign in. When you arrive for the first time, it's a bit sad you have no data, so let's fix it. Let's head to the ingestion section, as at the core of the value reside in the fact that you can ingest a lot of data and then perform actions over it and gain visibility, you have different sources that you can use to get data within your Siglens instance. For example, let's choose Vector, which is a Datadog product. You have a quick start guide to learn how to use it, with how to install it on different platforms, how to configure it, and a different configuration file and how to run it. Then you have a sample curl request to check if everything is working correctly. You can see that automatically it's using the URL of your instance, which is pretty useful. And you have the same for different sources of data, for example Splunk, the observability tool from Cisco. But this is just a platform overview and we don't want to connect existing data source, so instead we can use the send test data. Click on send test data to inject the data. And once it's done, you can head to logs. Now you can see we have a lot of lines that are coming from the test data table that have been created. It has different columns and a lot of data inside. You can choose different layout for your data, either in table view like this or as logs. So for this, it's not very readable, but depending on the kind of data you are using, it might be the best or also in single line display view. You can also choose the different fields you want. So let's say you just want the address and app name and it's displaying only this and same if you decide to keep the single line. Let's go back to the column view and enable everything. And the best thing we can do with our data is to search within it. So we have here a query builder. So without writing pure SQL queries, we'll be able to search through our data here or the tables that have been ingested by Siglens. Let's add a search filter. You can click and automatically it will list all the columns that you have at your disposal. So let's say we want the city. That will be equal. And again, you have a distinct list between all the different cities within your data. So let's say we want to choose Albuquerque. We validate it and then we need to click on the magnifying glass here to apply our search. And now we only have the data, if you look at the city, that corresponds to Albuquerque. This is for searching data, but you can also aggregate data. So let's say you want to count. What do we want to count the number of cities? But this time we want to count them within a country. So the search criteria will be country. Again, we need to apply it. And in an instance, we know in each country how many cities are represented within our data. Currently, we are doing our queries with the query builder here. It is Splunk SQL syntax that is automatically generated, what we see on top here, which is the same as free text. But we are not limited to Splunk SQL syntax. Let's say SQL, which is the one I'm the most familiar with. 
and instead we can write directly our queries here. Let's try to replicate the same. Select count city as nb cities from the table name. So here it is test data and currently we are grouping by country. So we'll do the same group by country. Let's hit enter or the magnifying glass. And we have the same results here. When you write your custom queries, but you don't want to lose it, you can save your queries like this. Let's name it number of cities per country. You can add a description, but it's just an example. So let's save it. Then you have the saved queries menu here. You can click on it and you have the list of all the queries that you will save. So you have a direct access to pre-fill your logs with the query that you store. And here you have your results again with the up-to-date data from the last 15 minutes. You can also download the data as a CSV or JSON file. Also get some information about the time it took to get a response from the server, how many recalls there was, and the date frame that is taken into account. So here's the last 15 minutes. Let's click cancel. And let's dive into more interesting feature. You can see the bell here is to create alert. Let's say we want to create an alert when some of our data is met. So let's say country has more than 50 cities represented. This is a weird name, but let's say we want it. So it's taking our query that we wrote. Our condition is when it is above 50, we want to check it every minute. And then, because it is an alert, we need to be notified that it is triggered. Currently, there are two options for this. So add new, and you have the choice between Slack or a webhook. I will use a webhook for this demo. And let's use webhook.site to monitor some fake webhook events. So it automatically generates us a unique URL. So let's copy it to our clipboard. We can name our contact point name. So test webhook. The type is a webhook and we paste the URL here and then we save it. Now it was automatically attached to send to test webhook, but you can create others and reuse them through your different alerts. And then you can add a message. This country has more than 50 cities represented. You can add custom label, go further, but let's just save it like this. Now we have the list of our different alerts. We have the contact point that we created, so you can create them before, add all of them, and then assign them within your rules. And currently it is waiting for our first request from our webhook. It should be triggered after one minute, if one of our countries has more than 50 cities. And then the webhook is called and you have the content of what was fired by the webhook. Now let's go back to our saved queries. Let's open the one we created. And let's say we want to create a dashboard by using those data. So we can click on that button to add the panel that we created here into the dashboard, either a new one or an existing dashboard. Let's create a new one, test dashboard. You can add some more information through the description and create dashboard. The dashboard, it's a nice place to create some queries filters on your data to display it like you want. So you can resize them, add more panel to create something nice. You have here the check to choose on which time frame you want to be based. And you have a clear overview of what is happening through all your data. So let's save our dashboard. And instead of creating a test one, let's check the existing one. By default, there is one that is named sample dashboard, which shows nicely the logs here, some pie chart generated based on the data, a big number and a bar chart. And you can adjust to get it by 12 hours by the different time frame that you need. Because again, if you go to logs, it is meant for big data, which means you have thousands of lines coming all the way down. So you really need to check properly which time frame you want to be based on, depending on your project or your business. And if you really have a huge amount of data, you might be interested in the live tail, which allows you to see the data in real time. So you can click on live tail to enable it. You choose the refresh rate here. So it's way faster than what we had before. 
or you can manually refresh if you are monitoring something in live. And again, you can write some Splunk QL queries or SQL queries to know what is happening through the data. Let's head to my organization here. You have the information about the incoming event and the incoming volume. So here we have 40,000 data that was ingested on that day. This is because I clicked two times on the test sample data. But if you really connect it to your external database, it will be way useful to see what is happening and when you have huge peak of data incoming. If you go to the settings, you can also adjust one nice option, which is named persistent queries. What it is, is instead of saving it to the queries, every time you will type a query in logs, it will be persisting so you don't have to not forget to save it. Like most of the tools, you can switch between dark and light mode. I know a lot of you like the dark mode, so let's finish like this. And let's open the support. It's always a good idea when you are interested in a product to dive into the documentation. First, to just see if the project is legitimate, if it is a serious product. Then it's nice to discover features that you don't know that existed and maybe other that I didn't cover in this platform overview. Let's open, for example, Log Query Builder. It's a feature we saw together. But for each feature, they provide some video guidelines and step-by-step -step tutorial to really understand how to use SIGLENS. Thank you for watching, we hope you enjoyed discovering SIGLENS with us. If you find our content useful, please hit the like button to help other open source lovers discover our videos. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming platform overviews. In the meantime, if you want to continue discovering free open source software, I recommend you this video, here.